Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 39. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So again, I know it's called Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, but it is, of course, of the entire cryptocurrency asset class. As of October, we are looking at a total market cap of 1.109 trillion, where the fair value logarithmic regression trend line fit to all data is now sitting at 2.142 trillion. This represents an approximate undervaluation of 48.24%. The general expectation that we've had for the entire entire pre-having year is that we will likely spend the pre-having year below the red logarithmic regression trend line, the fair value, but above the lower green regression trend line, which is sort of that lower bound. My expectation has been that eventually Bitcoin will touch the lower green logarithmic regression trend line before going into, in a sustained way, the overvaluation phase. You can see that we did this very thing last cycle as well. It might not look like we, we tagged it, uh, but this is just looking at daily data. If you actually look at, at hourly data and you go back and look at, at where total market cap went, it did go back down to around that level. We could actually just go go double check right now, right? Don't take my word for it. What if I'm wrong? Um, so let's go take a look here. So let me pull up total market cap. So we're going to pull up total market cap. And from here, we're going to go look to see what it did in March of 2020. And you can see that the low, so like if you look up here at this low, uh, was 108 billion. Right? 108 billion was where that low on total market cap went. And then if you go look over here, where was this lower bound? Right, It was at 109 billion. So yes, it doesn't look like it tagged that trend line. If you include the wick, it did. Maybe we should just put the wick on there just so people are aware. But we did tag that green trend line before going off into a more sustained bull run where we went into the overvaluation phase for a long time. I suspect the same thing is going to happen again, right? So I mean, you can kind of see here, right? I mean, like the where we already were, you know, the the fair value when we were back over here in, in December of 2022, the fair value was, or sorry, the lower bound was at 500 billion and we went all the way on to 800 billion. Now the lower bound is around 700 billion and we're currently at about 1.078 trillion. So again, it's not about the exact price. Remember, the argument is that crypto adoption is occurring constantly. Therefore, the fair value of the asset class is a monotonically increasing function. We know that prices do not always reflect reality. Sometimes we go overvalued, sometimes we go undervalued. And right now, the asset class is, is uh, theoretically undervalued, but we can stay undervalued for a long time. And just like last cycle and like the cycle before that, I suspect that we will tag the lower green regression trend line before we have enough really juice to send this thing into a more sustained bull run that can take us well into the overvaluation phase. Now, whether that occurs because total market cap goes sideways until we hit it or whether we go down into it is obviously up for interpretation. But I'll say this, you know, if you look at where total market cap is today, it's at the same spot it was it was at a, a year ago. But altcoins are not most altcoins are down significantly from where they were a year ago. The reason total market cap is the same is because Bitcoin went up, but most everything else went down. So this is a rotation of capital, right? This is the, 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 the Bitcoin dominance rally that occurred, occurred while total market cap went sideways, right? It was a rotation of capital from high risk to lower risk. And normally when we tag the lower re green regression trend line, it is upon that secondary scare for Bitcoin, right? Once there's no longer enough liquidity in the cryptoverse to support the valuation of Bitcoin USD, it then drops. It crushes the altcoin market one final time. That leads to the end of the altcoin reckoning. We go into either a recession or recession scare. The Fed prints money and we all repeat the same process again. But that is where we currently are today. And my expectations have not changed. I think we'll be between these two trend lines for basically the entire year. And I think that eventually we will go down to about 65% undervaluation. Um, we're currently at 48%. And the way you get to 65%, of course, is either you go down into it or you go sideways long enough to where the fair value is, is so much higher because we've just gone further in time. So that's where we currently sit with regards to this. And, and again, you can always take the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value logarithmic regression trend line. If you do that, you get a chart that looks like this.
right? And you can see that last cycle and the cycle before that, we ended up going all the way down here. Sort of look at the horizontal line. We are getting pretty close, but we are still sitting just above it. It is a very slow grind down is my guess. And I mean, I know Bitcoin's up today and I'm sure a lot of people are hoping I would talk more about Bitcoin short-term price action, but these videos are important. Like the, the Bitcoin Beauty Mathematics series, they're probably some of the more important videos I put out there. They're not based on short-term price movements. They're looking at the bigger picture and how we navigate the cryptoverse over the more macro scale. It tunes out all the noise of daily moves and weekly moves and are we above, you know, are we above a certain technical level or are we not? It ignores all that. It doesn't care about all that. You know, when we look back at this in a few years, all we're going to see is that we became more and more undervalued throughout 2022 and 2023. And yes, there was a little bit of a pop here by the asset class, but the reason it kept going more and more undervalued is because the fair value was going up, but the altcoin market was bleeding a lot. And the way you get down here to these lower levels is usually upon the, the termination of the secondary scare by Bitcoin, where altcoins finally bottom out, the altcoin reckoning you know, is finally over. So that I think is, is what we are, are still looking at today. And the other thing, the other thing we can overlay the risk on here, right? The, we do have the total summary risk. We've talked about this on the channel before, but it's kind of cool to overlay that on this chart just occasionally um, to sort of just remind ourselves of, of where we are. And I mean, you, you, what I like to do is is to sometimes um, hide everything except for maybe the lower wristbands and then the higher wristbands, right? And let me just remove total market cap, right? So look at that. It's kind of interesting when you look at it like that, right? You're just looking at high risk and low risk. And we are currently in the undervaluation territory. Now, what's interesting, right? What's interesting? And again, like this is what I said before. It's dangerous to DCA altcoins in pre-having years because many times they just keep going down and putting in new lows. Risk, total Bitcoin risk has been blue for a while, right? But altcoins just keep going down. So that shows you why, you know, if you want to expose your crypto, Bitcoin ideally is where you would want to be over the altcoin market, right? And if you isolate just the lowest risk band, you can see that we haven't even hit it yet in this pre-having year. And normally we do hit it in the pre-having year, right? 2019, we, were, we hit these lower, the, the lowest risk band. 2015, we hit the lowest risk band. And 2011, we hit the lowest risk band. 2023, we haven't hit it yet. Will we? We'll see. Well, that's where we currently are. Hopefully you guys like the content. Of course, we'll talk more about, about Bitcoin and, and everything as the week goes on. We did get a close above the 20 week SMA, which of course we'll talk about. But this video, I wanted to go ahead and get out because it is the first of the month. It's actually about to be the second uh, day of, of October. So let's go ahead and get this one out and then we'll move on to other videos as the week goes on. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, leave any comment. I mean, if you have any, any comments about, about this stuff, make sure you leave that down below. And, and the last thing I, I'll sort of always end with is, is that I do, I mean, I still do expect total market cap to trend to 10 trillion, right? I do. I know a lot of people think I'm, I'm just sort of macro bearish, but what I'm more bearish on right now is just the, the, um, the recession risk that I think is going to materialize at the end of this year or early next year. And we've, I've talked about that for a long time now, right? I've, I've, we've talked about that forever, just like it materialized in early 2020, just like a recession scare materialized in, in, you know, 2015, 2016, I think we're going to have that same thing come up again. And that is where we likely hit that lowest risk ban on, on Bitcoin total risk. And we'll see whether it's a higher low, a double bottom or a lower low. Obviously, you could make a case uh, several different ways, uh, but we'll talk about that if and when the time comes. So I do expect us to still trend to, trend to 10 trillion. I think we need to hit that lower green regression line first before really before that will happen. Uh, and so, yeah, 10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.